We're already familiar with the world object template from the meteorite scene. Let's take a closer look at what's going on inside. So we have a screen tap, a screen pan, a screen rotate, and a screen pinch. And all of these kind of feed down the line. And a lot of them go into the looping animation block for the position, rotation, and scale. Then we have the manipulator ring, which is that visible little ring there underneath the isosahedron. And then we have this plane tracker stuff up here. So when we tap the screen, you can see this is being triggered. And what this stuff is doing is it's setting the position of where this plane tracker is. So as we click, you can see the whole plane tracker is moving. But then if we click and drag or pan, you can see, oops, accidentally hit option. As we click and drag, you can see the plane tracker is still here, but this whole thing is moved away. And that's because the screen pan is basically taking the position of where our finger was, multiplying it by a small number, and then packing it together in the X and the Z, and then adding it to the outputs of this to get the position of the animation block. So the animation block is inside the plane tracker. So when we single click, it resets the screen pan. So the looping animation block is centered in the plane tracker. It's a little confusing because when we move it out, the plane tracker isn't moving because we only set it here once. But when we single click, it resets that and then moves it to the plane tracker position. And if that doesn't make sense, that's fine. That's just kind of how it works. And then for the screen rotate and screen pinch, screen rotate you can simulate by holding alter option and clicking and dragging, and then you can spin stuff around. So all this is doing is we're multiplying it by negative one, so it's rotating in the correct direction, and then packing it in the Y axis of this little pack, and then adding it here, and then putting it into the rotation of this animation block again. And then even simpler, we have the screen pinch, which is just being packed from a single value into an X, Y, and Z, being multiplied here, and then input into the animation block scale. So if we hold Alter Option and pull out, it gets bigger and smaller. So the confusing thing is this block here, which is where all of our stuff is and where all these parameters come from. But it doesn't look like much at all, really. It's just this purple thing. So let's dive in and see what's happening inside of here. If we click the block in the Asset Manager, we can edit the contents of it. And this opens a new window of Spark. And now we have three outputs over here and then the inputs. And this is where all the calculation happens. So this block root it's kind of the whole scene. So everything in here is contained in this block. So if we go over here to the block properties, we can add and remove inputs and outputs. And you'll notice the outputs are position, scale, and rotation, just like these three. And all the inputs are all these purple dots here. So this quick animation section here is where all the magic's happening. So if we open up this group, we can see the inputs are over here. And then the outputs are a little buried over there. And then a bunch of stuff is happening to convert the inputs into usable information. And we're not going to dive into what all of these are doing. But just know it's taking these parameters. And you can see them both here where it says speed or over here where it also says speed. And all this stuff happens just to create three different values. So that's a quick look at how blocks work. We can close this and we don't need to save this. And that's essentially it. That's a lot of stuff that you don't really need to worry about too often. And if you do make a world effect, you can always start with this template because it has all this stuff kind of figured out already. And then you can always delete these assets or create your own and replace them.